What a time to be building computers. I mean, just look at it. The parts are great nowadays. You can get a motherboard, it's any color of the rainbow. And I mean, there was a time when motherboards only came in green. But now you can get them any color and they come with RGB lights. And you got custom sleeve extensions to make everything look nice and neat. And of course you got, you know, RGB, RGB, and RGB. But there's one thing that's always driven me crazy and I'm sure you have thought about this too. It's your graphics card. I mean, look at it. I mean, you, you, the most expensive thing you your system, and this is, this is how you look at it. It faces down, you look at the top, and that's it. I mean, at least they, you know, started putting back plates on them, so you're not just staring at a PCB board, but come on. But there is something you can do, and that's put one of these in. This is a Cooler Master vertical graphics card mounting kit. And yes, it's made for Cooler Master, made by Cooler Master, made for Cooler Master, and this is a uh, not, this is NZXT S340 Elite, but I think we can make it happen. Maybe a little bit of modifications, but I'll show you how I'm going to install this vertical graphics card kit into my S340 case. So we're also running, you know, a Time Spy benchmark just to see what the graphics card does, you know, mounted how it is now. Because this does have a PCIe Express, you know, extension cable, we just want to make sure that that little extension cable doesn't do anything to hurt our performance. It shouldn't, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to test it. But, for now, let's just get it installed and see how it looks. This vertical graphics card mounting kit is going to come with one bracket, one extension cable, four mounting screws, and of course some uh, easy to read directions. The first step in installing this vertical graphics card mounting kit will be, of course, to remove your graphics card. After you get that out, we're going to remove all the slot covers because we're going to need all seven of those slots open. And if you're not using an S340 or you know, a Cooler Master case, it's a good idea to make sure to dry fit the mount just to make sure everything's going to fit before you go and tear things apart. Just so you have a better idea what's going on, the little teeth that would normally engage where your graphics card would are actually just going to tuck between your case and your motherboard. They're not actually going to engage on anything when you're using this in the S340 Elite case. If we spin it around the other side, you're going to see that although those teeth are not going to be engaged, the bracket for the GPU is going to sit nicely on that top rib and help support the bracket so it doesn't slide down or give you any sort of sag. After you make sure everything fits, it's a good idea to throw your graphics card in there and see what other areas you're going to have to modify in order to get your display connectors in. As you can see on the S340 Elite, we're going to have to cut off a couple of these ribs in order to get the access we need. So if you're going to use this in a Cooler Master though, you would not have to do this step. This is just for, you know, a case that this wasn't really intended for, but we can make it work. After you know where you need to cut, I used a pencil to kind of mark the areas exactly where I wanted to cut, just in order to keep everything as clean as possible. To make my cuts, I used a Dremel. Um, a Dremel is really not necessary if you don't have one. You can use a pair of side cuts as the metal's really thin, but if you are going to use a Dremel, make sure to cover up your motherboard, as you don't want any little pieces of metal flying inside getting where they don't belong. And then when you're done, just make sure to blow everything out just to be safe. If you're going to be using this bracket in the S340 Elite, like myself, you're going to need to leave the top rib and you can leave the bottom rib intact as you only need to clear out the middle in order to get to your display connectors. Next, we're going to install our graphics card into our bracket. So when you install the top screws, make sure to only get them started as you're not going to be able to fully tighten them down until we have it mounted. And the reason for that is they're going to get in the way with the rib we left. So if you wait till you have the graphics card mounted, you can tighten those down and then the screws will thread through and then they'll also be on the outside of the rib and help you support your graphics card. Also we need to connect the PCIe Express extension cable and you can do that after you get the graphics card mounted in the bracket. The easiest way to get it mounted after you have everything assembled is to, to kind of set it in position, get your rivet cable connected and kind of wiggle it until you get it to fall into position. And there you go, it's all done in and looking great. So that's it, I mean, there's not much to it. It's a vertical graphics card holder kit. It's meant for a Cooler Master, but as you can see, it fits in the NZXT S340 Elite. Easy, uh, just slight modifications, nothing major, anything you can handle yourself. Hey, if you have a Cooler Master though, it'll go right in. But if you have a case with seven slots, there's probably a good chance that this is gonna fit with only slight modifications. So we're gonna run another time spy just to make sure that our benchmarks stay the same and that our extension cable isn't hurting us any, but it's looking like it's running just fine. And while we wait, let's just take a look at our new setup.
Okay, the benchmark's done and survey says. So I ran times by two times and just looked at just the graphics score. Uh, just so I just ran it twice just to make sure I didn't have any irregularities. But with just the graphics score in the card in its standard slot sideways, looking like a pleb, the score I got was 7,592 and 7,596. Now with the graphics card mounted in the vertical mount from Cooler Master with the extension, I got a score of 7,598 and 7,595. So as you can see, these scores are identical and there is no downside. There's only upside to using a vertical graphics card mount. But thank you for watching and hey, maybe check out some of our other videos. Consider getting subscribed. We're always doing, again, I say we, just me. I'm always doing stuff like this, looking at new stuff, looking at new products, making my computer more RGB-y, or just having a good time. So make sure to get subscribed. We'll see you in the next one.